Okay. Thing. We have uh, our injection grout demo here. Uh, it's a little bit wet. I was uh, just cleaning it up. Uh, we had a little bit of clay residue uh, on there. So when you're starting an injection grout uh, project, uh, the first thing you need to determine is, is, is how much flow I'm going to get in, 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 the, uh, in the crack. So this one, the crack is pretty uniform here. You can see we have about the same width, width of crack throughout the uh, demo. But a lot of times on the job, your crack will open up wider and narrower in some points, portions. Um, so in, in determining where you want to drill your ports, you're going to look at those areas and try and gauge how much flow you're going to get from port to port. Because the idea is you need to make sure that uh, you know, if this is your port area, that you're going to get flow all the way down to, to the next port. And you're always going to start at the bottom and work your way up. So, you know, some ports may be a foot apart, some ports may be six inches apart, other ones may be several feet apart, depending on your flow. And, and uh, part of that experimentation is, is drilling a porthole and then making sure you have the proper flow. So you're going to take a masonry bit and you're going to drill a port directly into the face of the crack at a downward angle. Um, this is just going to help with flow of the grout when once you go. So you can drill that, that port in there. Uh, by drilling that port, um, you know, especially in a smaller crack, you're going to make a lot of dust uh, and, and debris on the inside of, of the crack. So we want to make sure that we get all that dust and debris out of there uh, and we have good flow of the repair material. So so, so where we drilled our port, we're just going to squirt some water in there and then make sure that we get good flow down the bottom. So right now, um, you know, we're cleaning out all that dust and debris. Um, we can uh, inject some water in there also. And what we're looking for is, does the water flow down to the bottom and do I get a clear, um, clear flow? Once I have a clear flow, then I know that um, uh, I've, I've gotten all the dust and debris out of, out of, the, uh, out of the crack. All right, so once we've established our port, um, we can go ahead and start prepping for the repair. Now, what we have to do is try and uh, cre you know, keep the repair mortar in the crack or keep the injection grout in the crack so that it doesn't flow out. We use a temporary dam uh, to achieve that. We like to use a, a, a clay, a potter's clay. You don't, when you're selecting your clay, um, you always want to make sure that you use a non-staining clay. You don't want to use a clay that's oil-based. So if you get a, a, a potter's clay that they use uh, that's a, a water-based or a natural clay, um, that won't leave any stains on, on the substrate. So once you get the clay, uh, we have to kind of make our ports. Whoops. Roll it up. And then I like to flatten it out a little bit. Why I flatten it out is it just helps with the installation. We're, we're installing this uh, clay as a, as a dam, but we also, you know, this is a void filling process. So we don't want to push in the center of the clay so that the clay fills the void because that's what's the grout's job to do. So if you flatten out the clay a little bit and push on the edges, then that will leave uh, a good seal and you won't have voids when you tear the clay off because you're just pushing it on the edges. So. A more. Back it out. Another great thing about the clay is if I spring a leak uh, during this process, um, it, the clay is very malleable, so I can just take a little bit of clay and you know plug a hole real quick. Um, as we uh, work our way up the wall, um, you can close ports off um, 
with clay very, very easily and then go to your next port. So we've kind of got up to the area where we've drilled our port hole. What I like to do at this point is kind of create a spout. Um, some people um, will, will do different methods, but the spout method, and I'm going to kind of make it big to exaggerate it, um, but if you can imagine a bird bath kind of cut in half, um, that's what we're trying to do here to hold the grout in there. And this is not a, a, a high pressure. Uh, we're not using, you know, we're just using the pressure of gravity uh, to maintain the flow. So by building that spout right there, I can uh, create a pool of grout in there. And then as that grout tends to flow in there, because sometimes, you know, those cracks are going wider and smaller, you, you know, it, it's going to this pool will give enough pressure for that to flow down and you know have enough pressure to go through those smaller areas. So we have our spout bill. Okay. All right, now we need to mix up uh, some material. So the mixing process is, is, is pretty simple. Use a, um, a mixing paddle. Clean bucket and clean water. When we mix it up, we're going to mix about three parts powder to one part water. What you'll notice is the, the buckets are, are, are very light. Uh, you know, a typical bucket of mortar is around 50 pounds. Um, these buckets weigh about 30 pounds. So the material is nice and fluffy. Uh, it condenses a little bit when you, when you mix. I'm just going to start off at a low speed here. You see it'll look powdery and then it'll just kind of go to a, a liquid. I think the data sheet calls for um, two minutes of mixing. I'll verify that for, for the video edit. <laughs> so how do we get the injection grout from the bucket into the, um, into the ports? Uh, what you may want to use, uh, some guys will use a modified bulk gun if there's a lot of injection grout to be done. Uh, a lot of times I'll see guys use syringes. Um, I've been on some jobs where they'll use um, uh, like the old-fashioned mustard and ketchup bottles that you'll see at a diner because they have a nice taper tip to them. Uh, again, we're just taking the, the material, the injection grout from the bucket, we're putting it in our spout and making sure we're getting good flow uh, down the material. So I'm going to use a, a syringe for this one. So I have some grout in the uh, syringe. Okay. All right. So we don't want to get any grout on the face. It will it will stain. So if you okay. do if you do spring a leak, um, make sure that you clean it up with water. So at this point, I'm just going to start. pouring material in there and at this point I also I may want to have a spotter if it's a if it's a larger project looking down below to look for any leaks all right oh 
And I do have a leak on the bottom because I forgot to plug the bottom. So <laughs> you can see right here, I just take a piece of clay, lock it up. But again, we're kind of just filling our reservoir. We have a rather large crack right here, so it's absorbing all in. Um, you would continue to do that until you had the reservoir uh, not flow anymore. Um, once that reservoir doesn't flow anymore, what we can do is we can squeeze this off. So we have a lot of pouring our grout into the reservoir. So we would keep filling up um, the reservoir until we had all the fl flow that, that would go. Once you have no more flow, uh, you may want to remove some of the grout uh, out of the reservoir. And then what you can do is close this up uh, because you know you have this clay and it's easily moldable. Um, you're going to have another port as you work up the wall. So to make sure that you know what is installed above doesn't come out, it's easy to kind of close this clay up close that port and then move up to the next uh, next section of the wall so another reason why we like the clay the next day when you come back the clay is going to be very very brittle if you can see I can wrap on there it's uh, uh, nice and brittle it's uh, gonna get a lightening color a little bit um, you can knock the heavy stuff off with a margin trowel uh, so all this will come off with a margin trout. You might have a little bit of residue uh, on the sides uh, with just a water and a stiff brush. Uh, you'll get any uh, residual clay residue off. And then what you should be left with is uh, a filled void and, um, you know, uh, a good uh, a surface to or, or a good repair.